Okay, and we are back for another round of our quarterback list. And now it's time for 27 through 21. Zach, floor is yours. All right. So we already hit on um, 32 through 27. So we'll be starting at 26 uh, right now. I will have Jared Goff as my number 26 quarterback. And uh, I've always said this about him. Like, I liked him with the Rams until it was clear that he wasn't going to be the guy to bring them over the hump. I think he was a creation of Sean McVay and his system. You saw what happened last year with Detroit. He wasn't really going to be a guy to bring you out of the mud and win you games. But I do think with talent around him, he's capable of winning some games. And I think that's why I have him here. The Lions have some real talent uh, with DeAndre Swift at running back, bringing in uh, DJ Chark from the Jaguars, St. Brown. They draft Jamison Williams, who will hopefully be healthy. Hawkinson, uh, they have some guys. And I do think Jared Goff will be able to improve Detroit's win total from last year uh, to this year. I think the Lions will be a better team. I have him at 26. At number 24, I will have Davis Mills. And I do, or at number 25, I should say, I will have Davis Mills. Uh, I was really impressed with this guy last year as well. I actually think that if you forget about everything we knew prior to them entering the league and you watch Davis Mills every snap he took last year and Trevor Lawrence every snap he took last year, you would think that Davis Mills was the guy that was the former chosen one, the guy that was hyped up since his early days in high school coming in to the NFL. And uh, in a bad situation in Houston, he really developed some nice chemistry with Brandon Cooks. That offense improved. I remember they had a big game late in the season against the Chargers, and they single-handedly really ruined their playoff dreams. That's a game the Chargers uh, still regret. Uh, Mills was great in that game as well. I will have him at number 25. I think uh, Houston might have found themselves a quarterback, and when you do that in the third round, like Nick Cesario did, that's not easy to do. So uh, I think he deserves props. I can see a likely scenario where at, uh, at this time next year, Davis Mills is still the guy Houston is looking at as their potential future uh, franchise quarterback. I'll have him at 25. Speaking of Trevor Lawrence, I'll have him at number 24. I want to give him the benefit of the doubt just how much of a disaster it was with Urban Meyer last year. And really from the beginning, that first game in Houston, you could tell that he was just not comfortable and something was off. But I do think at the same time, we should be talking about more how bad this guy was last year. It was one of the worst seasons ever by a rookie quarterback. And I know a lot of that has to do with the situation. There are plenty of other quarterbacks of the past that have had that struggles in their rookie season. Peyton Manning comes to mind, but obviously uh, they just take off. And when I think with Trevor Lawrence, the situation is better with Doug Peterson, but it's still the Jaguars, the team that hasn't won anything in 20 years, except for that one season. And with Shahid Khan and with Trent Baalke still there, like I just will never know if I could trust those guys to bring the fee, uh, this franchise to the promised land. I think Lawrence will be better, but based on what I saw last year, like it was really disappointing. I didn't know that a guy that was labeled as the next one, the chosen one, uh, I didn't think it was possible for him to be this bad. And that's why I am concerned. I have him at 24. I will have Tua Tugavailoa at 23. It's interesting because I agree in the sense that Tua probably isn't the guy of the future for Miami. He lacks a lot of the physical attributes and the playmaking that a lot of draft scouts thought for him coming into the league. Injuries has obviously been a big factor in there as well. But the guy has won football games with Brian Flores. Now with Mike McDaniel, it's weird because the situation offensively, especially with Tyreek Hill there, should be better and much more friendlier for him. But at the same time, I'm not sure if I could confidently say that the Dolphins are going to be better this year under McDaniel than the last two years with Brian Flores when they were only a couple wins away from making the playoffs. So it's obviously a big year for Tua. He's in a very favorable situation. I will have him at number 23. At number 22, I will have Jameis Winston. And I think this is an interesting one because with Jameis, he's coming off the torn ACL. And that was a big, that's a big, big question in my opinion, just because it happened about midway through October last year. It's a quick recovery, but I'm just confused on the Saints. Like this is one of the more, like, I don't want to say uh, polarizing teams, but the more I looked at it, like their off season didn't really make much sense to me just because they gave up so much for to get Chris Olave, who I really like, but they're acting like 
Drew Brees in his prime and Sean Payton is still there. And they have Jameis Winston coming off a torn ACL and Dennis Allen. This team continued to go all in to win. And I don't know if that is like the right mindset based on where they are with their salary cap issues with a first year head coach. And Jameis, it's weird because he was better last year in the sense that he won games, but he was only throwing for like 180 yards some games like it was really weird it, he was he was limited which worked but like without sean payton i just don't know what this guy is going to look like this season especially coming off a torn acl i'll have him at number 22 and at number 21 i'll go with my quarterback of the new york jets zach wilson it's a big year for him man and uh last year the stats are ugly there's no doubt about that I think the situation has a lot to do with it, but there were also some moments where he really flashed and he looked like he could be one of the better young quarterbacks in the NFL with that big time arm. The Jets have better weapons with Garrett Wilson uh, coming in this year, Uzama coming in from the Bengals, a nice young running back in Brees Hall, hopefully an improved offensive line. Um, Makai Becton, obviously the main part of that, needing him to stay healthy and be on the field and produce at all times. But uh, it's a big year for Zach Wilson, man, because there are a lot of doubters. I still believe in the arm talent and one of these quarterbacks from the heralded class of 2021 is going to have to succeed sooner rather than later. So I will have Zach Wilson at number 21. So to recap uh, my list here, I had Jared Goff at number 26, Davis Mills at number 25, Trevor Lawrence at number 24, Tua at number 23, Jameis Winston at number two, and Zach Wilson at number 21. Will, take it away. Interesting list. Interesting list right there. I'm going to start off number 26 with a guy that you haven't mentioned yet. And that's the one and only Carson Wentz at number 26. And there's a reason why I'm going to put him. A lot of reasons why. Let's break it down like this. Last year, I had him ranked number 21. Okay, so I had him ranked five spots higher than this year. Obviously, that dropped. Just like the Colts playoff chances that were 98% week 15. That ended up becoming 0% when they was watching the playoffs from Cancun, Wagwan. Okay, this was the same offseason that Frank Wright went and vouched for Carson Wentz was the same offseason that Frank Wright went and apologized to Jim Orsay for saying I was wrong. That tells me all I need to know. The fact that there were reports that came out that said even if the Colts made the playoffs, he was out of here. That tells me his leadership is not up to par. That tells me his play is not up to par. And he could have the physical attributes all he wants. He's a strong thrower of the football. You know, he could, you know, he could throw the ball deep down the football field. He has flashes. Last year, the statistics wasn't terrible. But not having your locker room and the guy, your number one voucher, vouch for you anymore, tells me a lot about how good you really are. And when you go to Washington, let's not act like this organization is any better. They're dysfunctional. They've been dysfunctional for 40 years. Noah's built his all quicker than that. Okay? The, um, listen, they've been terrible. So when you mesh Carson Wentz on Washington and you look at Carson Wentz last three seasons, three different teams, by the way, three different teams, by the way, and you look at Washington's dysfunction and you combine that and glue it together, I'm not expecting big things this year. That's why I got a number 26. At number 25, I'm going to go with the guy who replaced him on Philly. And that's Jalen Hurts at number 25. Look, um, I think he has a lot to prove. I think out of all quarterbacks in the NFL, not named Tua, he has the most to prove this upcoming season. Can the guy really play? Listen, leadership, grit, that's your dream quarterback right there. He's a great leader. He has the grit. He wants to get better. You know, and I, I took that into account when making this list. Like, yo, he wants to be great. And sometimes it starts with you wanting to be great and acknowledging like, yo, I got ways to go. And he knows it. He says all the right things. Rent is due. Rent is due. I'm not late on rent. Guess what? Rent came in and go last year, especially in that wild card where it was actually one of his worst performances, where he didn't make the right throws on the football field. And he had a shaky year, but he had some good things. And I just got to see him pile on those good things, you know, and listen, just make the right play mechanically can he throw the ball can he make the right play they got aj brown over there i think Devonte smith is going to be the number one beneficiary of that he has the weapons he has the coach he has the running game he has the tools to be successful but when those things are shut down and it's on jalen hurts to win the game can he win the game i guess we'll find out that's why i got him at number 25 at number 24 i'm going to go with miss trubisky at number 24, 
Last year I didn't have him ranked because he was um not a starter last year. Listen, one could argue Trubisky's lack of success was based on scheme and personnel. When I look at Mr. Trubisky and I just ignore the name Mr. Trubisky and I just look at a guy playing football, I see a guy with potential. I see a guy that brought the Bears to the playoffs, brought McNaggy to the playoffs before, and all he needs is a new scenery. I'm not trying to put all my stock into a preseason game, bro. I'm not. But he came into that preseason game in Buffalo, and he looked really good. And I'm saying to myself, wait, hold up. That's not the guy. Like, I know it's a preseason game. I know it, but that's not Chicago, Mr. Trubisky at all. Two different guys right there. So now going into a place where he's commanding the locker room already. He had the trip. Unfortunately, we all know that trip for, you know, very unfortunate reasons. Dwayne Haskins ORP but he got the locker room I, I feel he does the back is of the locker room and I think he's a great leader and I think he's poised for a year in a great organization compared to where he came from one of the more stable organizations in Pittsburgh that he could have a bounce back year and that's why he's at number 24 for me at number 23 I'm gonna go with Daniel Jones for the reason that I told Zay on the last I'm sure on the last segment that we did, you know, last year I had him ranked 26. I actually moved him up three spots. And the reason why is because I do believe in Brian Dable being able to get the best out of his quarterback, making the game easier for Daniel Jones. When you have the worst offensive line in football for all these years and you have a turnover issue, those are not going to gel well. Yes, we all know the turnover issue as well, and he has to fix it, and we're still waiting for him to fix it. But when I watch highlights, when I watch games, and I see games like New Orleans on the road where he just is it out 300 yards plus, and he puts the perfect touch on the ball, but yet we go to the game against Washington Thursday night, had a great play, guy dropped the ball, Slayton. I mean, right in his hands, he has the talent to be a good quarterback in this league. And all he needs is the right situation. I think the Giants are trying to build that situation for him. That's why I got Daniel Jones at number 23. When you talk about the offense, it's going to consist of a lot of pre-step motions, a lot of pre-snap motions, excuse me, a lot of quicker throws and shorter throws for him to get the ball out of his hands to reduce the amount of turnovers. I like Daniel Jones at number 23. At number 22, I'm going to go... Justin Fields last year I didn't have him rank he wasn't starting last year but um <laughs> look I, I still think he has talent and I think he's gonna show flashes just like he did this past season despite the team not being set up for him to succeed and clearly they had one of the worst off seasons this past off season this current off season and I think um it's gonna hinder him being higher on my list but still the potential is there I think from the eye test we can see him still being a quarterback that you will want to build your franchise around and um you know I, they gotta build it they gotta they gotta do a better job of building you know Justin Fields career otherwise unfortunately he will be moving down this list instead of moving up I got him at number 22 what it do number 21 I agree with Zach and I'm gonna go Zach Wilson he had number 21 last year I had him number 27 look they did more for Zach Wilson than they did for Sam Donald they spoiled Zach Wilson they gave him a lot this offseason they did a wonderful job with the draft and everything the free agent landscape getting a guy like cj uzama you know in the free agent landscape and of course the draft and everything but the thing that i noticed about zach wilson as a totality of last season is that he started trying to play hero ball where he took these shots down the field leading into turnovers but the last couple weeks he actually took on that game manager role and it worked for the Jets and it worked for him. I think if he could take on that game manager role a little bit more and sprinkle some of his, you know, um, God gifted abilities with mobility and chucking the ball down the field, they will be much better off. Don't play hero, bro. You're a rookie. Who are you saving, bro? No, you need to save your career by being a game manager. Let him be a game manager. Ease him in. Make him feel comfortable. And I think if they do that, he will be a guy that may have the biggest upside out of everybody 
in that class that he came out of so i got him at number 21 and we capped my list at number 26 i got carson wentz at number 25 i got jalen hurts at number 24 i got mitch shabisky at number 23 i got daniel jones at number 22 i got justin fields at number 21 i got zach wilson feel free to criticize me y'all zay i'll throw it over to you any thoughts on either of us um well the daniel jones i'm really intrigued with I'm just like more intrigued because the more the, the after I asked before about Zach about the Daniel Jones and that asked Lil, I mean asked Lil about the Daniel Jones and that why he wasn't at the bottom tier. Do you really believe that Daniel Jones? Like I have to ask again. I'm just so baffled. I don't know why, but like what what is it in Daniel Jones' game that that entices you and say okay this kid can actually play? Like he he can well, actually. Play. But before you answer that, let me let me add this. Daniel Jones' con rookie contract is obviously up at the end of this year. Do you think that after this season, the Giants are going to see enough by his play to say, okay, we're going to give him the fifth-year option and give him one more year to see what he built upon uh, this year? I'm not sure because even if he has a good year, you know, he could have a good year and the Giants still may not be sold. Like, bro, you gave us three bad years. You got one good year. Is it worth me picking the fifth-year option up? after that so you could look at it like that or he may have an insurmountable year where they say all right yeah this guy could really play and all it took was a uh, uh, uh us building a team around him and and actually having a right head coach that could bring that out of him that's so many dynamics to answer that question zach for me but i i think the kid could play okay and then um davis mills another interesting name you know i think that's another name like are, how high is the davis mill is trained is it just because um you know the texans don't really have high expectations to, to do anything during the season or is this guy really uh, a quarterback that's like all right maybe he could be a starter in the foreseeable future for this team well if you remember the texans actually had a thursday night game early in the season last year i believe it was against the panthers and he came into that game uh, and looked very stressed and confused. And at that point, I think we were all thinking, like, what the, the Texans are just a disaster, a circus that has no future. And I do think as the season went on last year, Texans fans really started to gain some optimism just seeing a guy that they drafted in the third round didn't know much about come in and play really well especially relative to the expectations um that franchise was just so bleak last year they literally were trying to lose didn't really have anything going for them and he comes in there right away and uh plays pretty well now with lovey smith in charge like david cully that was never really a, like a realistic hire like i'm still confused at why they did it but lovey smith has coached the team to a super bowl before and uh you know he, he's a guy that can uh, command and control the locker room really quickly and with houston it, it doesn't take much when you're in that bad of a situation to organize to energize the fan base and i think davis mills did that last year i think for me you could look at davis mills in two ways number one a kid that never had no expectations people didn't know who he was he just came out there and bowled no expectations just ball that's probably what you could look at him as and maybe it's a one hit wonder thing right no expectations ball now there's expectations what can you do but you can also look at it like yo trevor lawrence was praised to be the greatest thing since jesus and we saw no flashes maybe one or two games where it was like yo all right maybe that's what we was looking for but it wasn't a lot of good it was a lot of below par statistics but in Houston, you can argue, I mean, it wasn't a lot of good things going on in Houston, but guess what? Davis Mills came out here and actually looked good in that. So, yeah, I think Davis Mills, you know, he throws a nice spiral. Like I said, he, let's see, he's playing with house money, bro. Let's see if he brings it into year two. Um, Quick question. I think both of you guys on, um, out of the, the, from 32 to 21, right? Which quarterback on those lists, on either on both of you guys' lists, do you feel like will have the most successful year out of from the 32 to 21? Wow, that's a really good question. And uh, just quickly scanning this over, um, you know, like, I don't want to sound biased, but, like, I'm leaning towards Zach Wilson. I think he's one. And the other guy for me, like, honestly, would be Marcus Mariota. Like, I, I think the Falcons are going to surprise people this year just because of how they were decent last year when they really shouldn't have been you look at like some of the analytical numbers they won some games where they really sh had no business winning and in my opinion like that's coaching that's all coaching and arthur smith 
I've always liked him as an offensive mind in Tennessee, and the Falcons have some talented playmakers. Obviously, their defense has a lot to be desired for. They're going to have to score a lot of points. But I think Mariota could be a guy that not a lot of people see coming that has a really nice season. And Zach Wilson just has a lot to play for. The Jets did a great job surrounding him with talent. I've always believed in him and his arm talent and his arm ability, uh, but he's going to really have to put the pieces together. And I agree with Will. Like, you saw towards the end of last year, that Buccaneer game in particular, that he had some moments where he just kind of let the game come to him, uh, not try to play hero ball all the time. And that's when the Jets had some success. And I think he gave Jet fans reasons like Davis Mills to be excited uh, about him as a possible franchise quarterback uh, towards the back end of last year. So those would be the two guys I point to. Ah, uh, I don't know. Maybe I woke up this morning and drank the Daniels Kool-Aid, the Daniel Jones Kool-Aid for some reason, but Daniel Jones, for me, look, I believe in what they're building. How can I say it? I, I, I just believe in what they're building. You know, when you have weapons, which they do, they still got weapons here. The weapons wasn't utilized last year. Kenny Galladay, my man, throwing the ball. He, he wasn't utilized last year. Kadarius Tony is one of those guys that y'all got to watch out for. Watch out for this dude, Kadarius Tony. If you don't know about the brother, know about the brother. Learn about the brother. This guy is a guy that if you get the ball into his hands... Let him do something with it. See what he going to do. He going to do a lot. And I think Brian Dable is going to unleash that. He's going to unleash the playmakers around Daniel Jones. Get them the ball. Get out his way. Let that guy do something with the ball. And I, I pictured Kadarius Tony having a good year. Having a great year. A breakout year. I consider everything. Saquon Barkley may have a bounce back year. You know, we have to see. I, I just think they're going in the right direction with their coaching staff. And I think Daniel Jones... When you talk about them not picking up his fifth year option, bro, you have a lot of, if anybody has the most pressure this year, it's you. Now, what you're going to do with that pressure? Is that pressure going to be used as a form of motivation to say, yo, I'm fighting for my football life, my football career here. I could be working at Domino's tomorrow. We'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, I know y'all not getting tired of watching In The Huddle over and over again. So like and subscribe to the channel and receive these new notifications of no uploaded content that will be coming your way. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the rest of your day. I'm out. Peace.